I'm a marketer, but I feel burning, Spanish, shame every time I hear the words those are you guys from my colleagues from BDSM. Damn guys, today to be in demand and profession, you need to be able to build SaaS monetization models, create complex workflows in CRM, set up multi-channel analytics. Those, the reason to call a DevOps specialist and IT guy is not complexity, but only ignorance. Well, and perhaps laziness. Hi guys, my name is Pavel Karpucci, and today we will finally figure out who those IT guys are. After watching this video, you will know exactly who will help you to link a new domain to your website and who will help you with changing the approach to developing and deploying your e-commerce website. You'll find out who IT technicians, sysadmins and system engineers are, why if there is so much hype around DevOps right now. How do engineers differ from administrators? And what highly specialized professions are system administrators divided into? Let's start with IT technicians. This is the most basic level, the base of the pyramid. At the dawn of computer technology development in the 20th century, everyone who somehow knew how to work with computer was rigidly divided into two groups, noobs and hackers. You only know how to Turn on the computer and type on the keyboard with one finger and noob. You understand what's happening inside the computer? A hacker. In the 21st century, former hackers who professionally keep computers running are being called anything, including system administrators or engineers, which is not always right. In a company that employs 20 people with the same amount of laptops as well as a couple of printers, scanners and PBX, there are a few tasks for a professional system administrator. Okay, then what tasks are there in such a company? For example, to set up access to the printer for a new office manager, install software on the laptop of a new marketer, recover files that the CEO has deleted by mistake, remove viruses, and all that stuff. If there are more complex tasks, such as setting up server hardware, or creating a network between a couple of remote offices. Companies usually have two options. One, they can pay for these services to highly specialized professionals, or their IT technician could try to figure it all out on his own. In the second case, he will grow out from an ordinary IT technician to a system administrator or an engineer. And this is already the next level. Before moving on to system engineers and system administrators, let's first understand the difference between an engineer and administrator, and not only an IT, but in general. In addition to managing complex technical systems, engineers often do their design. Design, complex calculations, forecast, construction, all that. Administrators, on the other hand, rarely deal with such tasks. Essentially, they're engaged only in the maintenance of already working systems. If we draw parallels with building a house, then engineers are professionals who design the house itself, its water supply, electrification and sewage, while administrators are more like a company that takes care of the maintenance after the house is built. Specialists from the second group usually understand how everything is functioning, but they don't have the competency to design it on their own. If we rewind back to ordinary IT technicians, they are more like your retired neighbor. For 25 bucks, he will assemble a closet from IKEA, unplug the toilet and install a power socket. But if there are more complex problems, replacing pipes for example, a neighbor will turn your house into a construction site for a month and the more narrow specialist would only take a couple of days. Basically speaking, those narrow specialists are system engineers and system administrators who deal with design and maintenance of complex IT infrastructure systems, including servers, routers, PDUs, backups, and everything else that goes a little bit further than mailboxes, laptops, and printers. But system administrators are not with their tizer. Stop, stop, stop. If a company needs to connect two remote offices with one network, 
and configure servers for CRM, task manager, and database, then any system administrator can easily cope with that. But if we are talking about the company with thousands of employees, not one, not two, but 10 offices in the United States, France, and Korea, large companies often need to configure not only physical networks, but also VLANs or virtual networks. The speed of this company's business processes, development, production, logistics, will depend on how the overall network system is designed. In this case, the company needs a network engineer. These guys can cost two times higher than the average system engineer. The demand for such specialists is quite small, but even this level is hardly covered by Indeed or Glassdoor CVs. If a company had the business model based on web services work, web applications or online stores, then usually you need to monitor not only the servers, but also the web processes on the server side. How web servers, the dust protection, content delivery system are configured, are the necessary website modules and plugins working correctly? This is also a highly specialized job, and an ordinary system administrator, in the case of a non-standard problem, will take too long to solve. Therefore, there are web administrators or web system engineers. If a company needs to install an SSL certificate to encrypt data transmitted between the visitor's computer and the server, then the system administrator can easily cope with this. But if we are talking about a company that works with classified data, the leakage of which will lead to big problems. It could be a bank, insurance company, police or any government agency. Design of informational security system for such organizations is carried out by specialized specialists whose knowledge is sharpened to eliminate leaks. I have a friend and she works in the marketing department of a bank. And once at the beginning of her career, she was preparing for an event and didn't manage to complete all her tasks during the working day. Without thinking twice, she sent the files to her personal email to complete everything from home. The very next day, she had a long conversation with an informational security engineer, and she remembered forever that it's better not to do that. And we are moving on to DevOps engineers. So happens that we use streaming platforms more than we go to the cinema, and play online games more often than we play football on the grass. During Black Friday, we go to the retailer's website rather than run into the nearest mall. In 2021, only spur those processes. Behind all streaming platforms, online games and online stores, there is a complex and painstaking work of the developers who create those services. So companies whose process of development and deployment becomes continuous are immediately faced with a problem. How was it before? 10 years ago, it was considered normal to stop services to perform updates. Today, this can be imagined. The Walmart website makes hundreds of transactions per minute for thousands of dollars. It's no longer possible to turn off the service again, or a website, or a bank, and tell users, could you smoke a cigarette until we are done with the setup, please? The processes have become continuous, and to regularly upload updates without stopping the services, people came with the idea of continuous integration. Previously, Setting up all of that was done by the coolest developer on the team, or even a couple of them. It turned out that a highly expensive employee dropped out the process for a day or two. They were paid a lot for non-core work in which they usually made mistakes. That's how companies have concluded that instead of teaching expensive developers to administrate, it's more effective to educate administrators in the necessary aspects of particular development process. And as a result, we got DevOps or development operations and the people responsible for fine-tuned development, testing and releasing processes are called DevOps engineers. If we rewind back to the analogy with houses, then a DevOps engineer is responsible for transferring the designer's idea to a construction site. He's a construction specialist that knows all the key requirements for architecture and design. Therefore, the customer is always satisfied with the result. Let's recall everything that I've told you about. An IT technician in most organizations is responsible for laptops, PBXs, printers, scanners, etc. 
system engineers are responsible for complex IT system design, and administrators work with the existing systems. Both are more about networks, servers, and other complex hardware. In large organizations, the aspects of system administration are often divided into narrow specializations – network, server equipment, informational security. DevOps engineers are indispensable persons in companies with a development team and continuous integrations. Online games, streaming platforms, lush retailers, and other services with an audience of thousands. They are responsible for move, development, testing, and deployment. All these guys are really cool, but you are the coolest here because only you can spank the like button.